We're jo joined here at Post 9 by former Secretary of Defense Mark Esper. Secretary Esper, it's good to have you here. Great to be Post with you both. Thank you. Right now. What do you expect to hear from the president tonight? Well, I think he'll speak to, obviously, the, the state of play right now in Israel with regard to uh, the attacks uh, by Hamas into Israel and the expected incursion by Israel there. I think he'll speak to the humanitarian concerns that is ever-present. And I hope he will speak about Iran and what it may mean for an expansion of this conflict once Israel uh, begins that incursion into Gaza. What does it mean for Iran at this point? Well, look, I, I think uh, given the messaging we've seen from Iran, we hear from Hezbollah that if they go in, uh, I expect that you'll see uh, a widened conflict on the southern Lebanon border. We reports today of more attacks, missile attacks into Israeli communities. Less reported the fact that there are drone attacks on American bases in Iraq and Syria. So I think things are teeing up when you see the rhetoric coming out of Tehran. You see some of the other rhetoric coming from other parts. And still at play are the 200 and some hostages that Hamas has threatened to execute if Israel comes in. So it, it, it seems likely that this is going to widen some. And when that happens, the American, US, U.S. military will be involved. To, to, to what degree? Yeah. I think if uh, Hezbollah crosses the line, not these tit for tats, but really begins a rocket barrage, things like that, then I think given our rhetoric, our position, two carrier strike groups soon in the Eastern Med, we're going to have to get involved with tomahawk strikes, maybe airstrikes, things like that. Otherwise, our position on deterrence looks weak. It looks like we're not following through. Boots on the ground? Chances no, of American boots on, boots on the ground? I, I don't believe so. We obviously have uh, U.S. military in Israel right now helping. You could see boots on the ground in hostage rescue, uh, rescue operations involving Americans. But in southern Lebanon, uh, northern Israel, no, I don't see that right now. I mean, the, the, it's a risk for Iran, certainly, right. if they were to do this, given how much the U.S. has come out and back. You do not think they will be dissuaded by the, the ships in the Mediterranean? I don't know. I think that's the unknown. I mean, again, you see the rhetoric coming out of uh, Tehran. You see the attacks on U.S. bases. You see what they're saying. You've got to expect the worst. And look, once a conflict begins, it can unravel really quickly. I don't foresee boots on the ground in, uh, in, in uh, northern Israel. But what happens if an American pilot gets shot down? What do you do then? Right. So these things can escalate very quickly. I think it's right to be talking about deterrence, moving troops. And I think those have been smart moves. But I, I'm hoping to hear more from President Biden about the role of Iran in this process and pushing back, sending a stronger deterrence message. Because, look, if it expands, it expands. It's going to affect the markets, like your previous guest said. This is not good for the regional economy. It's not good for energy. There will be a lot of spinoffs from this. It will affect a lot of people more broadly. NYPD put out a statement yesterday saying the city, as an example, is on at a heightened security stance. What is the likelihood of an attack on, on the homeland? Well, look, we, we, we have members of these groups in the United States, right? That's, that's not a, a, a secret. And uh, you see the unrest in cities, on colleges, college campuses. Uh, you see the outrage on the Arab street. Don't expect Arab leaders to tamp that down. And so, uh, again, you'll see that proliferate over time. And, and of course, we have uh, Russia stirring the pot there, disinformation, uh, because this helps their situation in Ukraine. These tentacles reach out pretty far and wide. China and Russia aligned against the U.S. We saw that on full display. What about their relationship with Iran? Do they come in to support Iran? I, I don't think they'll come in as much to support Iran, but you see China already lining up behind and with the Arab states yeah. because they want to fill that vacuum there. They want to, on the back side of this, they want to uh, seem aligned to the Arab states and help them capture, you, you know, if they want bases in the Middle East, particularly in the... Um, uh, in the Gulf, that helps them a good deal. But expect them to stay there, and Russia is going to continue to support Iran because, of course, it gets a lot of its drones and support, uh, military support munitions from Iran as well.